Hey, what's up everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so I was looking at options for the Lakers, just trying to revisit the Charlotte Hornet deal. If for some reason, you know, it's it's time to completely move on um, into plan B. And that Charlotte deal to me, it looks reasonable on basketball in a basketball sense because it gives you most definitely a better win now opportunity this year with two pieces that you can bring in that fit better it but the sacrifice you're making is Terry Rozier's contract is for five years and Gordon Hayward's contract is for three years so you're committing to a total of eight years eight years between these two players uh, just so that you can compete for one season Gordon Hayward's not going to play up that contract. $29 million for the next three years. The way his body has been, he's not going to be able to play that up. He's a great player, but that's just not where he's at. <clears throat> Excuse me. Terry Rozier is a fantastic player. I really like Terry Rozier. Five-year commitment is one hell of a commitment. It's not the easiest thing to move. If he suffers a knee injury or something goes wrong, you're stuck with that thing, and it's an albatross if he's not able to play up to it. Now, if he does play up to it and he's his regular self, you got yourself a heck of a dog. That's a dog. But that's a heavy commitment. It's a heavy commitment. That's why Michael Jordan is willing to move on from it because it's a five-year deal. It's not desirable at all. So you're picking up two very undesirable contracts to get rid of a expiring contract. You got to understand, Russell Westbrook's coming off the books at the end of the season. We can trade that thing at the deadline. But, you know, a lot of times it's it's one of those situations where people are looking at the fit and they're saying, we can't compete this season. And if we're not going all in for this season, then as I always say, if we're putting one toe in, you know, we got one foot in, one foot out in terms of the, uh, you know, whether or not you're going to go all in, you're not going to get anything out of this. You're going to get the results of not getting anything. Or not having done anything, rather. So, I don't feel the Lakers need to be turning back, looking backwards in terms of, okay, well, let's let's try to revamp this. Let's see if we really want to do some things that we didn't have set in mind. You know, I think we should still be moving forward. But that hard bargain that we, we are drawing for Russell Westbrook's contract, uh, I don't think we need to just frivolously trade it just because of the pressure of this season's timeline. I just think the commitment is too serious. You, you, are, you are committing to eight years between those two players, and I don't think that we care to have them for eight years. I don't, I don't believe that. Um, so the Lakers need to really weigh what this season means to them and what those contracts actually mean to them as well what what they will be what your plan will be for those contracts best case and worst case scenario and if you don't have a viable plan then you need to understand that you may be taking on more than you can handle with those contracts uh, so that that deal you know it's, it's, it's a reason why the price tag is as it is, it's a reason why he wants us to take those two particular players. It's because those contracts are awful. <laughs> and they should have never been signed. Um, so, with that being said, I'd rather keep Russell Westbrook's contract personally for the betterment of our team. And, to a certain degree, to the betterment of LeBron James' tenure here. I mean, if he's going to commit to us past this season... Um, you know, he's going to be on a team that is a lot better for Russell Westbrook coming off of the books than he would be with Gordon Hayward and Terry Rozier. Trying to move those contracts because you know that's what we're going to have to do. That's inevitable. And and it's not going to be easy to get rid of them. You're going to be taking back something else undesirable in order to do that. So this is the, you're opening up a path for... LeBron to look at you at the end of this season and say that decision 
makes you even more so undesirable than you were before you made the decision and then bolts to Golden State. Nah, I can kind of see that path forming already anyway. So that does not make sense to take on something that's going to have us committed to players that we don't want to commit to past this season. The logic doesn't add up for me. It doesn't add up. We can find a better way to to uh, compete for the season. So, I think we need to keep searching. I don't I don't like the Charlotte deal. We need to make Michael give us a a, a better deal. Simple as that. If he's gonna if he's gonna give us those two contracts, um, and he's taking back our expiring contract, we need to make him give us the difference. It's just it's just that simple. He's got to give us some picks, or he's got to give us one of the players he don't want to give up. So that's that would be how I would play that. I don't think the Lakers should really take this season lightly at the same time. You know, I really don't. I, I don't believe watching this thing with LeBron James is your best option. I've come to that conclusion. I'm, I'm stuck to that now. I do believe going forward with LeBron and letting him determine whether or not he wants to be a part of this thing is the best way to go. And just making sure you you, pre- you prepare yourself and, and do everything you can to make sure that you're ready for his departure. That's, I think, is the best possible way to play it because that way you don't piss him off and you don't leave yourself any bad contracts that are not going to be helpful after he's gone. You know what I mean? And if he decides to stay, he understands why you made certain decisions in the short term to assure that he would have a good career here in the long term and if he were to leave he understands that you made sure you covered your backside in the event he did covering your backside Lakers I think is the best way to play it with LeBron James because as long as you stay clean he's going to choose you because you got the Los Angeles Lakers organization and, and the locale that he wants to live in but once you start doing things that are not best for you in the name of trying to keep him I think that's where you're going to lose him because that's where Cleveland lost him. I think this is what it is. You got to be able to find a balance between what it means to win now and what it means to take on something that's going to end up being worse for you in the long run without even guaranteeing you an opportunity to win now. So I think a lot of those things would have been a lot easier if we could somehow get a sign and trade with Kyrie for Kyrie Irving, you know, shipping Russell Westbrook's contract out that way. I think that solves all of those issues, which is why the, I think Laker Nation is so bummed out because now it puts us back in a situation where there's pressure on us to get this Russell Westbrook deal going. And that deal is, um, you know, right now the one we have on the table is not one we like very much. And, of course, that John Wall deal is, is long gone. He's going to be signing with the Clippers. And that they've, they've reached the buyout agreement. So, you know, now it's just us. It's just us. And, look, I know Jeannie ain't going to like this, but that's an option. The Houston Rockets just, they just, bought, him, they just bought out a contract the exact same size for the exact same length. And that player would not be a part of their books. It is something that we may have to swallow to to make sure that we have the best possible fit and to assure that we have the cap space necessary. may be the only thing left to do, Jeannie. And I don't know what that entails. I really don't know. For all I know, that keeps her on the hook for the next several years, which would make the coordinated contract even more favorable than this would be. I really don't know. But what I'm saying is, if we can't move Russell Westbrook, you're not winning now by having him on tab this season at that price. That's not winning now. <clears throat> and if we're not winning now, you guys already know what my solution is. And it ain't one that we like at this point. It ain't a good one. And it's, it, it entails cleaning house. And getting rid of everything worth value, and bringing back stuff that that can reset our timeline and uh, put us back in the Stone Age, basically, for at least the next three years, while we try to gather uh, 
the maturity of those picks that would be coming our way in those deals. I don't think that's a path we want anymore. I don't I don't really want that path anymore. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Because I don't think that guarantees me an opportunity at a championship. No different than keeping my toe one foot in and one foot out gives me a guarantee at a championship. I think that gives me stability, which is ultimately what we want. But if you've already jumped in this situation with LeBron James, you already gave that up. I think that's what this has taught us over the last three years. You've already given that up. So what's it going to be? Are we all in? Are we going to put one foot in, one foot out and see how it falls? Because I can guarantee you nobody's going to be happy with that. And he's going to bolt. He's going to bolt. We got one year with him to get it right. So I don't think we can afford to just start the season with Russell Westbrook, assuming we can trade him at that at the deadline and then maybe bring it back some scraps play that thing out like Cleveland did when they brought in Larry Nance and Clarkson I just don't think a season like that with him and AD is the way to go you expecting Anthony to stay healthy I don't I don't I would rather us take another stab at trying to get another player at the same price Kyrie was and do it the same way shipping Russell Westbrook out in that particular deal and just giving ourselves a shot I think the problem is though is Kyrie was such a heck of a fit I don't know where you're going to find a player that's going to have that value. You see what I'm saying? Because Kyrie's price is supposed to be low, which is why you would be able to move it for a Russell Westbrook type of deal. Right? Even though it would require you to get other contracts involved, other teams involved, rather, you would still move it for that price. So in my mind, it's like, okay, who can we bring in at that price? that would help us in that way. And then it brings you back to Charlotte and Terry Rozier. So I I understand the conundrum of the situation, which is why I think the Lakers should probably just stretch the contract. Because bringing back Terry Rozier at that price and bringing back Gordon Hayward on top of that puts us in a hole for many, many moons. Just so we could do a little something. Nah, I would rather us get the cap space, right? Sign the best possible free agents. Get 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 everybody on free agency we can get. And at that point, see what pieces fit, be as loaded as possible, empower our young players, empower AD and Braun to be high usage this year, and see where it takes us in the deadline. If some of those pieces really turn into something, if they play their way up, we could trade them for pieces that really help us, or maybe picks that can really help us and just continue this process of keeping that duo strong two max contracts and role players I think that that's a better a better way forward um, than trying to go forward with Russell Westbrook on this season I just don't think the fit works um, and I think you run the risk of everybody being unhappy and, and him being soured by the trade deadline to which the eh, season might already be lost season might already be lost by then so I don't want to risk it. I think we should try to get rid of him um, in a way that if we can't get a trade going, just evaporates the contract entirely. I think that might be our best option. And you hate to think you can't get nothing for that, that contract. You hate to think that you're going to not let it expire so you can make that 47 come at the end of the season because that really is enticing for all teams, including us. But if this season is valued as high as I think it is to the Lakers, you trying to put a banner up for this year, it leaves you in a a lot of different, it leaves you with a lot of different headaches trying to assess this thing, put it like that. So yeah, if Kyrie, if you're following me, you can, (laughs) you help all of these problems. Um, Well, it's not in Kyrie's hands no more. I can't address him. It's all about Sean Marks now. Sean Marks, it's up to you now, man. If you want to go forward with Kyrie Irving, I, you know, God bless you guys. I see that as a headache for you guys. But for us, he alleviates our headache. Look how ironic that is. So I try to figure out what the heck we're going to do in building our team. The best solution I can find is Kyrie Irving's value. <laughs> I, can't, I can't lie to you guys. It's the best option we got. And so, you know, him choosing Brooklyn... If he, in fact, really does want to play in Brooklyn this year, 
Hey, man. We're, we're, we're going to be suffering for it. I think it, it looks like we're going to have to do some things we don't want to do as an organization because of that. Um, unless some, Rob can get creative. You know? Because that, that is the reality of what it is that I see there. Um, so I sure hope he still wants to be a Laker. Even though he's saying what he's saying, I sure hope deep down he wants to still be here because that would help our franchise out tremendously. And plus, I think the fit, as I've said a million times, it's proven. With respect to him and KD, they have not won. Him and Braun, they won. Him and AD, they won. And look, you can go out there, give it your all, see what Ben Simmons is healthy. I think it's worth a shot, especially since you started it, you want to finish it. I believe in that. I believe in that. Can't You'll never know if they could have won unless you go see it. You've seen you and Braun win. It's a... It's, it's a you know, looking at it a certain way, it depends on what you value, right? I could totally see the opposite. But what I'm saying is, if you don't win out there, if you don't win out there, you will know that here it was proven that you could have. You could very easily come here and have those same doubts about the net. But you wouldn't have said you were certain it would have worked. That's the difference. That's the difference about the LA situation. And as far as the Nets are concerned, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm questioning their decision making. <laughs> I'm literally questioning their decision making. I just don't know what it is that they're doing right now. I'm not certain. You know, I'm still poised to to see if they have interest in moving on from Kyrie Irving. I'm still poised to see if, if it's KD who's driving everyone to come together, right? Because it's a lot of motivating factors. It's a lot of noise. And I'm, I'm really not certain what's going on there, which is why I'm curious to see how things play out over the next several days. Because I don't know that it makes sense in my mind that everybody involved want this outcome in Brooklyn. This doesn't make sense to me for everybody. This doesn't make sense. I don't think Sean Marks should want this as a GM having to build with Kyrie at $36 million in the Eastern Conference with all these wingy players all this, these deep teams that are everywhere. This doesn't make sense for them given how they saw that how their team looked last year and their, their 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 lack of assets. This doesn't make sense. And in KD, that situation, I think he has better fits based on what he's seen from this front office. Conversations, you know, reports of him not having spoken to the front office since the end of the season. That doesn't align with what just took place. That didn't, that don't add up. <laughs> you know, Dame jumping out the window and posting what he posted. That seems like that could be considered something not so good. If interpreted the wrong way, I don't know what what that would entail. But what I'm saying is it's, it's too much going on for me to just think everybody's about to head back to Brooklyn. And everything's about to be sing-songy, dancey. Everybody's ready to start the season and it's cool. I just, I'm not buying. I'm not buying. I'll believe it when I see it. I think Kyrie... Who knows his decision making? He may he may be right on board, ready to go. He he feels how he feels, but I'm telling you, everybody else, uh uh-uh. uh, I'm not certain. I am not certain. That all this talk about oh Kyrie was looking for a five year and he and, and he blinked. That don't add up. That narrative does not add up to me. The notion that he was using the Lakers as leverage. To get them to do what exactly? Because the outcome that I see was the option he always had, which was to opt into his contract. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Where was the leverage? Where was the where was the success in what it is that the outcome was? So he blinked. Essentially, they called his bluff, and then what? He did what they wanted him to do. No, what they wanted him to do was leave that money on the table so they could build their team. 
if that makes sense, right? Unless they have the idea that KD is attached to the situation and it, it's very layered and I'm not certain. But I can tell you this, it's very confusing. And I don't... See, the key to me is just understanding where Ben Simmons is. If Ben Simmons is in the, in the gym in his best tip-top shape, you know what I'm saying? If he's in the best possible condition at this very second and his condition is only going to get better from here, that changes everything. Or, or if I find out they got some incredible rookie in the draft somehow, some dude I didn't even know they had, and suddenly he's a stud, boom, that can change some things, right? So it's a lot of things that can change about the net situation that I'm just not privy to. If they have certain pieces that make this situation look intriguing, that could make everything different for sure. But from where I'm at, nah, I don't see it. I see nothing appealing about that situation for all parties involved to come together and be on point, on board with this Brooklyn situation. It just doesn't look that good on paper. It really doesn't. I'm not going to lie to you. Because at the end of the day, Ben is an unknown. Ben is an unknown, and Joe Harris, I don't know what health, you know, hopefully he'll be 100% healthy. What is he going to look like out there? You know, he's just a knockdown shooter, one of the best shooters in the world, but where is he at? What is he going to do defensively? Is he going to live up to that contract? I don't see that. I don't anticipate that. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not an... You know, I like Seth Curry. I think Seth Curry and Joe Harris could be excellent pieces for Ben Simmons. So right there, that's a good it's a good start. I see that. And I see Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant. Maybe I'm not giving enough credence to the scoring that they're putting on the floor. But how are they going to keep up with the, the Boston Celtics this season? I don't see any difference there. They're still gonna get they're gonna run into the same problems with that team. What are they, who's staying in front of Giannis? Uh, Claxon? I hope they got that piece I'm telling you I don't know they have because if he's not there, that's a 50-point game for Giannis each and every time if he wants it to be. I mean, I just think that the, the Brooklyn Nets situation has a lot more holes than I would be comfortable with if I were everybody involved, you know? Maybe one or two people may see a good way to go forward with this, but everybody? Eh, not everybody on board over there. No way in hell. I can't, I can't, I'm not buying it. Somebody got to see that this ain't the way forward, as I do. I think with the Brooklyn Nets, the best way forward, and I say it a million times, build around Ben Simmons. You keep them shooters that I just mentioned. If, if Joe Harris is one of the shooters you want to keep, you want to invest in him going forward, he fits with Ben Simmons just fine. Seth Curry, like I said, bam. But I don't know necessarily if his timeline is the same as their timeline. If he's not as 100% healthy. And if his game doesn't completely mesh with theirs. And Kyrie Irving's a ball handler. He's best with his ball, the ball in his hands. Ben Simmons, I think, is also best with the ball in his hand. So that could be a little thing. That could be something, maybe not. But I just, I would have to see that fit work, man. And I would have to be able to believe that Steve Nash is going to put a system in place that's going to make it work. And I have yet to see that. I've yet to see it. So, you guys tell me, if you're a believer in the Nets, go for it. Hey, by all means, prove me wrong. I'm always ready to be wrong. The Celtics proved me wrong. And they sure did. I called them out. They made changes. I, I ate crow. No problem. But I, I got to see it from Brooklyn, man. If y'all going to come together and you going to choose Brooklyn over L.A., y'all better win the championship. That's how I feel, man. I'm, gonna call, I'm just going to call y'all out as a competitor. I'm just going to do it right here and now. So before we get to anywhere, I'm, 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 I'm a positive competitor. I think that 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 trio over there, if they're at their full strength, you can build around them and win. I don't have any doubt about that at all. You just have to get the right pieces for them. I don't think Brooklyn can do that based on their situation. But I'm not allowing that to be an excuse. Just like I wouldn't allow it to be Kyrie 
AD and LeBron's uh, excuse. I wouldn't give us that excuse, and I'm not giving it to those guys. They got to win it all, man. Y'all want to come together and make a statement back east? Shock the world. Run it back. I don't, I don't think there's any margin for just mediocrity there. Y'all can't get swept out of the first round. Yeah, that that can never happen again. I don't care if it's been out there or not. Can't happen again. So that's what I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm not going to keep talking about Brooklyn. That's their business. You know what I mean? We'll see what happens. Hopefully for their sake, in my humble opinion, they'll make the trade and give themselves um, an opportunity to further build what it is they need to do for themselves. I like Kyrie as a piece, but not for them. More so for the Lakers. That's just how I see it, man. My name is BDL44. I thank y'all for watching. I'm out.